Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will be showing some of my own project code and I will be explaining some of the best practices, tips and tricks that you can use for almost any of the React and React Native projects. So stay focused and learn. Okay guys, so first things first, let's download some really useful and insane plugins that are going to help us in our react and react native development so go in the left panel of face code go, go to the last before options or uh, simply click ctrl shift and x to open the extensions panel the first plugin that i would recommend is pretty here so this is just a code formatter this um, makes our code look super clean so this works for javascript typescript css html view angular and all the other things so this is highly recommended this is the first thing second is es7 react and react yeah this is insanely awesome plugin that will help that will reduce our lines of code to great extent uh, so this is uh, so we have snippets for import statement uh, snippet for creating components uh, snippet for creating writing use effects and all those things yeah so this is it so these are the first two plugins that will help us get started all right so the next step would be to have a proper folder structure for all your react and react native projects so the basic uh, ideology is that don't dump all of all of your required project code in the root of the project structure so what you can do is you are provided with the src fi file by, by default i mean the src folder so what you can do is you can place everything inside the src folder so uh, suppose you are having components that are uh, being used in various screens you can have a components folder and place all the components inside that folder so that is what a proper structure means and what you can have is uh, have a folder like containers or uh, screens something that states the screens and what you can do is uh, create one folder for each screen so that that each particular screen should contain the js file that particular js file and the styles file so all the screens if you see all the screens have one js file and one style file so that is how we have to structure your code and all the reducers and all other services or, or any other api that you're writing for your project can come under services and you can keep a folder called theme to have uh, colors and uh, some constant values you can store in the theme folder so this is how you can structure structure the folder structure so let's move on to the next thing so next thing would be to reduce all the relative inputs and use absolute input instead of relative inputs so the main objective of this is to remove this dot dot slash this dot dot slash dot dot slash kind of inputs and then use a cleaner way to import our packages so that it it uh, becomes easier for development and maintenance purpose so the first thing that we are going to do to have absolute import is to create a file in the project directory that is jsconfig create a file called jsconfig.json and copy paste this command here i will post paste the link in the description so that basically you are uh, trying to say you are adding compiler options that the base url is src instead of the project directory so when you do this what you can do is you can straight away go here and instead of doing dot dot slash and all these things you can straight away import components remove all the dot dot slash Uh, if you can see all these reducer reducer components and all these things are present in my root of src folder so that i have done something like this all right so the next thing is to always use fragments over the div so that is nothing but instead of using the div in the root of the component just use a normal open and close bracket so it makes the code look clean and it also improves the performance because 
one less node is created in the virtual DOM. Okay, the next thing is to use the object literal. If you are building an application with two or more users, always use object literals instead of switch case. It makes your code more readable. And for just two users, use ternary operator instead of normal if condition. If you are enjoying this video, please hit the like button and subscribe button so that it helps the other users to consume this content. So next is uh, don't define function inside any of the render function. So uh, even if it is a one line function that, that you are putting an on click in the react or on press in react native, just define a separate callback function uh, and call it inside the function. My next tip will be destructuring the object. Use object destructuring instead of accessing it with the dot operator. Whenever using objects, use ob object destructuring and then access it directly uh, so that the code looks more clean and easy to read. This can be applied even if you are building a component with props. Instead of accessing the data with prop.name, prop dot height prop dot weight you can directly destructure the prop and then you can access the destructured direct data directly like height weight and so on the next thing is to order the imports the rule of thumb is to keep the import order like this so first import all the built-in functions that is import react and all those things and import react use effect and uh, all these things and bring in external imports like prop types style components and all those external import packages and last thing would be your internal custom custom packages or your custom components that is header image so for nav nav bar or any color color files that you are using in your project structure Next thing is component naming. Use Pascal scale to name your components. So that is simply uh, starting with a capital letter for your component. And as you can see, uh, see the checkout product or JS file. So start the name with capital letter. And in middle also you have to use for the second word also you have to start with the capital letter. So that is basically the Pascal scale. So for every component, use Pascal scale for, to name your components. And while using, while creating an instance of that component, use the camel case. So camel case is starting with small letter and having uh, capital letters for second and third word and so on. Here are some other small tips that I would like to share with you guys. Use self-closing tags for if your component is not having any children. When building large strings, use template literals instead of string concatenation. So template literal is nothing but you using a tilde, uh, tilde symbol and a dollar sign and wrapping the variable name with the open bracket and close bracket. So the variable value is directly accessed. It's nice, clean and easy to change if you want to change something in the future. Always use JSX shorthand format for representing boolean variables. Let's say you want to control the visibility of header or navbar. You can do it this way. Instead of passing a true value to the boolean variable, you can just straight away access the variable at that as a prop. The next thing is string prop doesn't require to be wrapped inside a curly braces yeah it is a prop but still a string prop doesn't require to be wrapped inside a curly braces you can straight away pass the string as like it is so thank you guys if you like this video please like share and subscribe bye